Okay, question number two was, the guilt we feel for getting down during COVID when we have it so much better than others, while also recognizing that what we are experiencing is real and should be addressed. For example, we live a fortunate life and one can feel guilty complaining when our situation is so much better than elsewhere. For example, the people in India or in other places that aren't as fortunate as us. It's a great question. I think it's really pertinent for a lot of people in Canada or really people in the wealthier, more developed countries. And I think there's a couple components to this. The first part is, is about the guilt. So let's focus on that first. Feeling guilty or that our suffering or pain is not worthy because it's not as bad as somebody else's. One that's, a, again, to the first video, that's a pattern, a habit of the egoic thinking mind. Comparison, I'm not, they're not, this is not, that's not. So just to recognize that. And another point there is that that's just not helpful at all. Comparing ourselves to other people in this context is not helpful. So we want to, as is mentioned here, recognizing that what we are experiencing is real and should be addressed. So let's do that, okay? It's important to, to honor that, okay? It's totally healthy to feel guilty. We know really that guilt is an emotion that's tied to a specific behavior. So really guilt equals I did something wrong or I acted in a way that was inappropriate and I feel bad about that. That's important, that's a good thing. It's a good signal to you that you've acted inappropriately and that you should or can do something different. Now, in this scenario, COVID and the fact that you live here and we have it really good, you haven't done anything wrong there. So the connection to guilt just unexamined is not helpful. What I think is helpful about this is that you are acknowledging the fact that right now you are feeling guilty and you're aware of this disparity in which so much of it is out of your control. And so it's good that you can be aware of that and acknowledge that and honor that. But when you start comparing yourself and then judging yourself because of that, that's not helpful. Okay, so we want to be able to allow ourselves to feel what we're feeling. We want to do our best not to be judgmental of that. And if we are, then maybe we can notice the judgment of the judgment and so on and so forth. But the first step, as sort of again was mentioned in the question, just honoring the fact that I am feeling how I'm feeling. I'm allowed to feel that way. It's valid to feel that way. And it's okay to feel that way. We don't necessarily want to get stuck in a pity party and, and et cetera, but just acknowledging I'm feeling like this, that's really helpful. So what do we do once we can acknowledge that these are these feelings are happening? We want to practice what's called name it to tame it. So you're literally going to say, I am having the feeling of guilt right now. And you could also say, I'm having the thought that I shouldn't be feeling guilty, or I'm having the thought that I shouldn't be feeling this way because on the surface, my material life uh, is very good or something like that, or I'm privileged. So you're just naming the reality that you're having the thoughts and you're having the feelings. Another practice that you might want to do is sort of what's called thanking the mind or talking to the mind in some ways. And we can sort of just say, hey, thanks for your input here. Thanks for your judgment. Thanks for the story. Good story. Thank you. But it's not helpful right now. Something like that. It's called uh, cognitive diffusion or distancing or detachment. Um, so we want to start to create this or, or continue to cultivate that thinking, observing mind quality that I mentioned in the first video. To add to that, do something in these moments. So if you notice you're getting stuck in this sort of yucky emotion thought cycle, do something. 
maybe you could just stand up and you could clean up your desk. You could clean up the kitchen or you could do something like that. Maybe you could ask a family member if they need help with something, a colleague. But it's this idea of kind of taking action to get out of these states. Another point to this is sort of this inherent illusion of free will. Now, philosophers have been debate, debating this for millennia, and this is not a conversation about the philosophical underpinnings of free will. But what I want to point out is that, again, you didn't choose your parents. You didn't choose where you were born. You didn't choose so many of the things that have happened for you. And in the same way, the people on the other side of the world that you're comparing yourself to also didn't choose their situation. Okay, so just to recognize that, notice how it impacts you, and then take action, do something, compliment someone else on what they've done well, or whatever it is, but just take action. Okay, the really, the moral of the story is stop thinking and do something. One of my favorite saying, favorite sayings is, you can't think your way into right action, you have to act your way into right thinking. So if you are compelled by your sense of empathy to what's going on in, on the other side of the world, maybe you can donate money, maybe you can donate time or expertise, or maybe you can do something that's genuine, that's by choice, that's going to support the cause that's causing you this guilt. So you have a choice, you have agency there. So remember, thank Thank yourself or thank the mind for its input, but it's not helpful. I don't want to hear it right now. It's okay to feel the way you're feeling. You want to validate that. You want to honor that. And then you want to take action to get out of that place. The last thing that I forgot to mention is practicing gratitude. I've heard a saying from a wise man that goes something like, turn guilt into gratitude. Whenever you're feeling guilty about something, can you flip it around and practice being grateful for it? In particular, that saying relates to this particular question. And through the practice of gratitude, we enhance our well being, we reduce our negative emotion, and that's a good thing. So, practice gratitude, start a gratitude journal, whatever you need to do to get that going. But it's a great practice to do. So add that to your repertoire and it will help. That's my input there. I hope it's helpful for you and I wish you all the best. Take it easy. Peace.